Welcome again to Learning AutoCAD 2013 tutorial number 10. Today we'll see how to create and use blocks while moving towards the completion of our house project. What we're doing is based on this plan, so pay a look at it and use it as often as you need. These tutorials are being produced by EasyCAD for you and just remember to give a like if you enjoy. The ability to create and use blocks is a major benefit in AutoCAD. Blocks can range from being a single object up to entire drawings. For example, here we have all the windows we will use for this project. Here you see this window is composed of single lines. To create a block out of it, I type B for block and then block definition dialog box appear. As you see, it has three main sections with several options. First thing we'll do is specify a name for our block and we'll type the generic name of window 1. Now the next step is select the objects that will compose our block. So let's click on the select objects button and after that the dial box will hide temporarily and we'll select our window. Now right click or hit enter and the dial box will come back. After this, everything else is optional, but it's good practice to select a meaningful base point. You can enter the absolute point or the absolute value of the point with the coordinates on the left section or pick a point, which is a way better uh, to use this feature in our days. So we'll select the pick point button and again we go back to the model space to select it. After selecting the point, we're back on the block definition dial box and we can type a description of our block in this area. It might be something like the dimensions of the window or something else to define it. For now, with this is enough, so let's click on OK and our block is done. Now, when we click on it, we see that it's no longer single lines, but an object itself. Let's repeat it for the second window and we'll do the same. Select the name and select the objects to become part of it. Select the base point and finally click OK. For the next one, instead of typing the shortcut, we'll go to Insert tab on the ribbon, now the block definition panel, and click here the Create Block button. And now do it on your own, creating the third window. Here on the screen you have the dimensions for these blocks just in case you want to do it on your own. An important concept for the block creation is that it should be created on the default layer 0. I know that some of you might not know what this exactly means, but we'll cover this in the next tutorial. Otherwise you will be creating the block with the elements of the layer in which it was created. Once you create a block, it becomes part of the drawing. Whether we use it or not, it is embedded there. And again, here we go ahead and create the sliding door block that we'll use as you just learned or follow me on the screen. Now let's erase this blocks so you see how we'll use it. We go to insert tab, block panel, insert button. You will have on the name area a drop down menu if you have multiple blocks and on the right a preview of the one selected. Pick menu and you can select from here the one you prefer. So we'll use the window 3 block which is the small one. You see, it also has some options to specify if you want. I won't select any, and once we hit OK, you will have the block attached to your crosshair until you click where you want to be inserted. If you have a specific point, use it. In my case, I'll put it anywhere here, and then we'll see where it should go. Let's repeat it and use another option. So call again the Insert command. Use any value for the angle option, I'll use 90 and now you see the same block attached to the crosshair but rotated at an angle of 90 degrees. Click where you want it. I'll repeat it now with 180 degrees because this is the one we'll be using. Now 
repeat the command to try the scale option, check the specify on screen option under the scale section, now specify the insertion point, so click anywhere and see that if I slide my crosshair, you can increase or decrease the size of the original block. If we click for the second time, it will be as big as you specify. On the other hand, look at the tooltip and see that the default value of 1 is there, but you can override that, enter a different one. I'll enter a 2, so it will be twice as big as the original. Of course, we won't be trying each and every option, but you have a general idea of how it works now. Now let's eliminate the ones we won't be using and let's move this one from the midpoint to the corner since we have in our original plan the distance from the corner to the midst of the window. Now we call again move, use this placement option and enter 2 feet 3 inches, comma 0, comma 0. And we just position it at the right place. Now let's start doing this position and repeating this process. Call insert again. Remember, if you need to rotate the block, use the right angle. I'm using here 180 degrees, and since we don't have the right point to place it, I'll put it any place close. And then we'll move it as we just did. First, to the very corner, and then using the displacement option of the move command, We'll use 2 feet 10 inches, comma 0, comma 0. Just to verify, I'll use the distance command and see on the screen that it is right. Repeat the same for the third window. Place it on the corner. And move it based on the measurements at Two feet four inches comma zero comma zero. And now instead of keep inserting this block, I'll be copying it and then positioning it at the right place. I hope you already know how to copy objects from previous tutorials. Just remember that you can also go back to refresh how to work with all the commands and review all the material. Now we'll rotate it at a negative 90 degrees. And again, we'll move it to the corner to be positioned from here at 4 feet 6 inches in the y direction or going up. Now let's insert a different block the same way. In this case, it's the window one. I'll place it here to grab it through the midpoint and place it at the corner again. And now, for the sake of the speed, we'll copy it with the midpoint as the base point. And we'll place copies at these corners too. Now we move it again based on our initial model. This is at 6 feet 5 inches on the x-axis. The second one at 5 feet on the x-axis also. And finally the third at negative 10 feet 4 inches. Now repeat insert command, select window number 2, and as you can see the insertion point coincides with our base point, so we save time by placing it directly at its right position. Unfortunately, we didn't have this for the previous ones. Now let's use insert again for the sliding door. We need to rotate it at 90 degrees and then we use the corner to put it. Now all we do is moving it up 
20 inches so it gets to the right place. Now for our last window, we'll draw a reference P line to get to the position. So let's, let's use 8 feet 10 inches going down and then snap to the perpendicular point. Now change to insert tab, block panel, and insert command again. In the dial box, let's uncheck the scale option and keep check the rotation one. Now hit OK and insert the block at our point. As you see, it is still requesting specify rotation angle. You can opt here for enter a number, or in my case, I'll move the mouse until the preview it is in the right position, and then just click to accept the position. Now get rid of the P line and let's do the garage roll up door. So use the same method, draw a P line of 5 feet 2 inches to acquire the right position. And now use rectangle command. Enter the values for both length and width. Nine feet for the length and two inches for the width. Next step is click to accept the position on screen of the rectangle and finally erase the reference line. At this point, we saw how to create, modify and insert blocks on your own. However, CAD also includes a set of blocks as support to make your experience easier. This takes us to the next step, which is see how to locate those blocks in the palettes and the science center. These things, along with the layers training, will be the subject for our next tutorial. So this is it for today. Remember, feel free to comment and give a like if you enjoy. Again, thanks for watching and see you next time.